How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Bear Reviews, back with yet another review. And, um, I have no idea what kind of time it is right now. Uh, all I know is it's stochasticity time, I guess that's how you say the fucking thing, in the form of stones, uh, your uh, father <laughs> smelt of elderberries. Wah, wah. Play on, um, uh, Monty Python, Holy Grail. It's your mother's, or was it your mother's a hamster and your father smelled of elderberries, I think is how it goes. So, a little bit of funny punness on there, not to shit, no, don't crucify me, everybody. I like me some Monty Python, but it doesn't blow me away, so the name itself is funny, but I know people get a real big kick out of it, because it's one of those kind of shows that people are, I don't know, people, if you don't like Monty Python, people think you're weird. Not that I don't like it. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about this and talk about the beer. Um, yeah, not a huge stone guy, um, you know, uh, sans their collabs, they don't really do much for me, but... Um, I will give this a whirl and see what it's got to offer. Uh, as far as what it says in the bottle, uh, Stochasticity Project, your father smelt of elderberries, medieval-style ale brewed with elderberries. I can get those words out of my mouth. 10.3% alcohol by volume. And as per classic stone, there is a um, novel on the back of this motherfucker, so buckle up. Um, let's see, I'm going to skip over to the Stochasticity uh, thing and just basically say get getting medieval on a long forgotten beer from times long gone. Stochasticity Project beers believe they explore lesser trod territory. Imagine if you were emerging from the further steps of dark misty forces of time, holding a chalice, perhaps one of those catholically divine caliber, filled with an ale style dating back to the medieval to medieval England. We find ourselves carried by the galt of hooves, which oddly sound like someone is clacking together two empty coconut halves and happen upon a castle siege. Insults are being hurled from the walls from above. Frenchmen, time to run away. After one last whack of the mighty stone castle walls with a broadsword, to discuss a uh, strategy just beyond the reach of catapult bovines. Beer brewed with elderberries is freely shared. What strategies come from this? Trojan Rabbit, a brilliant ruse, they're sure to catapult. Uh, word to the wise, Sir Belvedere, don't strategize while drinking this elderberry beer, or the constables may show up at the end of your flick. Let's see, two row pale, um, mild, mild ale, amber, peated, and oak flakes, so hopefully there's a little bit of body to it. Um, special ingredients, elderberries, and hot varieties, English Goldings and Target. Um, so yeah. Uh, Stone's labels are always on point, man. Uh, the screen print things, the label design, everything about it. Really like their label design. Just like I said, their beers sometimes can be a bit of a miss, at least for me. But, we'll see what happens here. Elderberry, wow, that is very berry looking. Um, elderberry's not my favorite fruit in the bunch, but if done right, I'm sure she can shine. Just under a finger, nice creaminess to it, infinitely crazy, super tight compact bubbles. It's got this kind of reddish pinkish hue to the uh, head itself. And that sucker is pretty damn clear. I mean, that is magnifying glass clear. It has a, it, like a, a deep reddish brown to it. But if you actually hold it up to some light, you just literally see right through it. So, um, so yeah, pretty clear. Um, usually you're doing inflated oaks with a bit of berry. Expect a little bit of kind of haze to it, but not with this one, so... See what the nose has to offer. Very mild berryness there. Am I going to say it's elderberry? No, it's just a generic kind of berry note to it. To be confused, or you could basically go with raspberry or something like that as quickly as you would say elderberry. A little bit of like a, a malty, almost boozy sweetness to it. That's it. I mean, really, the nose for 10% tenning change, 10.3% beer, really kind of lacking on the nose aspect of it. So, yeah, I mean, it's big in ABV, and there's a lot of berries in it, because you don't get that color unless you have a ton of berries in it. So, you know, hopefully she um she shows and proves in the taste. So, she looks she looks some, like something. She smells like something. Let's see what she tastes like. Cheers. Pretty much what you're getting in the nose is what you're getting in the mouth. You're getting this weird, not super hot booziness. It's still like lingering on the back. 
and they feel it kind of evaporating, like an isopropyl alcohol kind of evaporation. You're not getting really over the top sweetness, nor are you getting like a ton of berry. This is a weird beer because it's very neutral in its taste. There's really not much going on there. You get like almost like a little bit of like a, like a earthy kind of. It's not even like an earthy hop. It's like almost like a like a, a, a plant, a vegetal kind of planty kind of earthiness. I think coming from the berries. That weird boozy evaporation. It's not hot. You just tell it's there. Um, berry taste is muted. The um, malt is muted, the hops are muted. It's very, very weird because there's really not much going on there. You know you're drinking something. You know there's flavor, but it's very, very, very small flavor-wise. But you know it's not a small beer because of that booziness. Yeah, it's like ripping it around, kind of doing a bit of trying to hammer out some flavors out of this thing. And other than that weird kind of earthy berryness in there. There's really nothing else going on, which is kind of weird for 10.3%. Age. This should be aged. That's my thought process basically right off the bat from tasting. And I think this is something you need to let sit, let some flavors develop. Um, so yeah. Um, I don't like it, but I don't not like it. It's very neutral. It's the Switzerland the beers, I guess you'd say. I'm going to give it a 75 because I don't know what else to give it, because, I, like I said, it's not, it doesn't taste bad. It doesn't taste like much of anything. Um, but it's high BV kind of confuses you, because there should be some kind of flavor to it. Um, so I'm going to give it a 75, value and availability. I think I paid, let me pay for this, I don't know, eight bucks maybe, nine bucks. For a 10% beer, if you want to get drunk, it's going to be awesome. But, um, yeah, I mean, I give it, Value, I'd give it a six. Availability, I'd give it a seven because it's stone. You can pretty much get it wherever you want. And basically just say, you know, 70 overall, but that I think that score can go up. I don't think it can go down for me. Again, subjective. I don't think it can really go down, but I think it could go up pretty high. Age might turn this into something cool, but right now it's just kind of like weird. Um, it's kind of like, like you said, a Switzerland of beards. just kind of floating in the middle of nowhere land with not much else going on. Um, and just say, if you like what we like this, if you like vodka, because vodka really doesn't taste like much of anything, but it'll get you fucked up. So if you like vodka, you'll like this beer. So there you go. Um, another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, if you did or you didn't or somewhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, all that fun, fun stuff. If you want to check us out anywhere else on the internet, can. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Untapped, Bassett Beers, and all four of those places. And yeah, another review down. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a beer with more flavor than this one. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.